friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm about to go watch a volleyball tournament and I ended my last vlog in the same outfit. So if it looks familiar to you, it's the same day. But I wanted to share with you guys something first before I go inside. I like to share things in my videos that I've been learning about, that I'm reading about, things that stood out to me or were significant to me. And I just listened to this in podcast form. I saw it yesterday also on Instagram and it just kind of stuck out to me. So I felt like because I heard this two times in a row, I should maybe pay attention to it and wanted to share it with you guys. So it's a little writing by Emily P. Freeman. I've talked about her book that I read, The Next Right Thing, a couple of times, I think. I know at least once in my videos. She's an amazing author. I love that book. I would like to read more of her books. So anyways, let's get into it. Just wanted to read this to you guys and hopefully it means something to one of you too. Hello you. I wonder who you might become. Maybe you're the one who doesn't have their scripts down yet, but speaks up anyway. You might become the one who takes walks in the middle of the day, who takes swing dance lessons on a Thursday night, who pets the cat to catch your breath, who learns to sing, to sew, or ski. You might become the person who says the thing, or stops saying the thing, or continues to wait to say the thing because you're just not ready yet. What if you become a person who stops trying to just write, balance every single part of your life and instead accepts the cyclical nature of time and begins to lean into your season with sure yeses and brave noes and matter of fact, maybe laters. What if the person who you might become is the one we've been waiting for? We want your presence, not because of what you can do for us, but because we like who you are and who you are becoming. You are loved and you are lovable. The person you might become is a person God already loved before you became the person you are now. That's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. She also says in the podcast, there is no shame associated with the person that you were in the past that became the person that you are now. And that really stood out to me because we've all got parts of our stories that are not so shiny and pretty that we'd like to put on the internet or even share with other people in our personal lives. But God still chose us before we were that person, when we were that person, after we were that person, and who we are currently, and who we will be. That's kind of amazing to me. Like if God, the creator of the literal universe, is not ashamed of you and your story and he chooses you anyways, why should we be? Okay, now I'm gonna go cheer for some volleyball teams. <laughs> Girl, listen, we need to talk about this mustache situation. Not yours, mine. See, it doesn't look so bad, but let's be real. We all got a little something, 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 something right here. We all got a little something, something right here. We're gonna start with this bad boy, and then we're gonna dye my eyebrows at home. If you guys have not met a little face dermaplaning razor, can I put you onto it? For the love of everything that is good, you will not regret doing this. Every few weeks, it makes your makeup go on so soft, so beautiful. So I like to use the long side to do my cheeks. Oops, some little peach fuzz just came out of there. Um, I did this a couple of weeks ago, so I'm not gonna do my forehead. My hair is wet, by the way. That's why it's up in this bad boy here. Um, but I will do in between here and I normally just stick with the long end. So let's let's just give a little something, something here. Now what I'm doing, this is so sharp, clearly. I mean, it's, it's a little razor, but it's just one single blade. So you have to be really careful about how you put it on your skin. What I'm doing is I'm gently touching the edge of the blade to my skin, dragging down, picking up, dragging down. I'm just doing that really quickly. You don't want to just scrape, 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 because you'll end up cutting yourself. I've definitely done that. Okay, we got that. If we got any unibrow going in there, she is goodbye. And we're gonna go in with the mustache. Sometimes you gotta pull your skin so that the skin is totally flat because we don't want to slice our already very fine upper lip off, okay? <laughs> this I always hold these little sideburn hairs up because one time I accidentally shaved them off <laughs> it just looked really stupid when they grew back
okay, now let's dye our mustache. All right, I got this from Target. I'm pretty sure it was like $7. It's actually beard dye. This exists. I had no idea this is a thing that you could buy at the grocery store, but it's a thing. And it's great for getting your, your, your brows a little action. I'm sure it's great for getting your mustache some action. It's really easy to use. However, it's risky business because I may or may not have turned my eyebrows orange once on accident. Okay, so honestly, the scariest part is the framing of the eyebrows. If you don't do this, let me just tell you, you are a gutsy gal because you can end up with some very scary eyebrows. So I'm basically drawing a reverse eyebrow on my skin. I normally do this with Vaseline. I don't have any right now, so I'm just using Aquaphor and I put it in my little gua sha. And I have a puny little brush. So, we're gonna just get a little action up in this brush. And I like to start with underlining my brows. Uh, I like to think of it as if I'm putting concealer underneath my eyebrows, right? The goal is to get right up to the hair. You wanna make sure you don't miss any spots though, okay? Now we are going to bring the front of the brow. My upper brow, I like to cut it in a little bit more than I would expect, just because in the past I've had some trauma where I accidentally put the Vaseline too high up on my face and my eyebrows look like they grew in height by a quarter of an inch, which looked terrifying. Now that we're giving slug, we're gonna do the fun and also terrifying part. We're gonna dye these bad boys. Please, I beg of you, read the instructions before you do anything, 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 please. Things can go so wrong, but I've done this one 101 times, so I'm gonna mix up my color and I'll come back. Ah! I dropped my lid. So while I'm mixing these together, I'm gonna tell you guys about a very sad, sad story that is the reason why I have not done this on my eyebrows in quite some time now. What is that story, you might ask? I was fake baking. You know, we feel like confident queens when we have fake baked, and I was fake baking my face. I decided, you know what, I'm gonna be a legend and dye my eyebrows. Also, we're gonna do it all in one night and it's gonna be incredible. We're gonna be slaying, we're gonna be multitasking. Great. But I dyed my brows and used face tanner that night. When I washed the dye off of my eyebrows, I'd be looking like I stuck two Cheetos to my forehead, right? Something happened, something happened where the dye interacted with my face tan just say it wasn't cute and the amount of exfoliation that my poor brows went through that week they went through a lot so i won't lie to you it was a little traumatic okay okay so i'm using the butt of this brush this brush is supposed to like put it in your beard but obviously this is huge for my eyebrows and i'm pretty sure i would end up with it in my eye and i'm just applying this color to my eyebrow if i had not framed out my eyebrow with the aquaphor i would not be going in this obnoxious with this color i've done it reverse before where i just try and paint in the brow dye but it takes me too long if i don't have our guardian angel aquaphor because it takes me so long that the brows end up developing at different times and it's just not the vibe for any of us. Okay, I forgot how long I need to let this sit for. Oops, five minutes, great. Uh, I don't have my watch, uh-oh. I'm setting my watch for three minutes because I'm giving nub and they definitely have it on there longer. I'm slightly concerned about the mustard color. I don't remember the brows being this color last time. Could be fine. Could be why they turned orange. Ew. You know what? 
we're just gonna trust the process. We're gonna trust the process. While my eyebrows are cooking, we're gonna we're, we're gonna give ourselves some pearly whites. The amount of coffee that has been in my body lately, it's a little tragic. And my teeth turn ivory so fast. So we're just gonna do a little whitening strip action as well. This is not gonna solve the problem immediately. I do typically have to use three of these in a row. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to use them for, it says use once a day for 30 days. I've never done that because my teeth are really sensitive. And so they get all, they get all sensitive, you know? Sensitive girlies. Hey there, how you doing? This is the cutest that I've ever looked. It's the, the hair towel that really does it for me. My watch is going off. Time to wash the brows off. See if it's giving Cheeto or sexy. You really have to trust me on this one. They're pretty darn good. They look pretty darn good. I do have to say it was, the color was a little bit more potent last time you used it. So I think it just might be aging. Not mad about it. It still looks pretty good. A little bit darker, especially up in here. I'll just have to use less makeup to fill it in. It'll be lovely, incredible, wonderful. So we're gonna resume our skincare journey. So uh, I just popped the cap. Oops, she's a little bit dusty, but I use the hydrating treatment lotion from Aveda. It is lovely. It smells so delicious. I'm just putting it on a little cotton round here. It helps your face absorb product. When your skin is moist, it receives moisture and I think retains moisture a little bit better. Why, I don't know, but it does. Now tonight worked out excellent because I am on my recovery night for my skin cycling. I've been doing that for a few months now. I did a real quick video on my TikTok. So I'm gonna show you what I use for that. But I would not suggest dermaplaning your face and then putting on any kind of exfoliant, anything other than something that's really gentle on your skin because you could end up with a big old reaction on your face. Maybe your skin is tough, but I am, I'm not about to play that game. So today's recovery, gentle, loving, wonderful, we're being good to our skin night. So it's fine. So I just put that bad boy on and then I am going to go in with the Ordinary Hyaluronic Acid 2%. I love this bottle. I love that it's frosted, that it has a cute little dropper on it. It just feels so fancy. I did not mention this. I am still avoiding the skin directly around my eyebrows just because I am honestly a little afraid that something might react with my brow situation again. I don't think it will because this is all just supposed to be very gentle, but just in case, we're not even gonna come close to touching it. We have put that on the skin. We're gonna let it set and while it's setting, we're gonna put on our eye cream. I can't even remember where I bought this. I'm pretty sure it's from Target. It's called Boots. I bought it because I think it's so flippin' cute. It's a retinol eye cream, so I'm pretty sure it's supposed to help with eye puffiness. Oh, what is it good for? Skin looks brighter, reduces the appearance of fine lines, lightweight. It's not the most hydrating eye cream. I still like it because I can wear it under my makeup if I feel like my eye bags are bagging. They're looking a little bit like crocodile skin instead of designer leather, you know? I'm gonna pat it under my eyes. I accidentally just put it in my eyebrow a little bit, so oops. And then we're gonna use my face cream. It's a CeraVe Skin Renewing Night Cream. I got a fuzzy in here. Look how empty it is. She's been well loved, all right? So we're not gonna forget about the old necky neck. The neck needs some moisturizing too. All right, and while the skin is feeling nice and slicky and wonderful and delicious, we're gonna wash off. I've been doing this on the daily and it just feels lovely. It feels lovely, especially along here. Your jaw muscles and situation that's going on there, it just feels so nice. So let's just, let's have a moment, a moment for ourselves. First time lighting those candles they look cute I've got little eye rollers and jade rollers in the fridge but my sister recommended I put some eye hi buddy some eye patches in the fridge I think it's about to be a game-changer 
I got these eye patches off of Amazon. They're crystal collagen gold powder eye mask. I just like that they were gold. Yes, this is incredible. Put it a little too close to my eye, hello. I'm just having a moment. She's having a moment. I was just gonna go crack a cold one. By cold one, I mean a cold bubbly. I've got the cherry ones in my fridge, but I forgot I got tape on my teeth. That's what these feel like, tape. Full on scotch tape. Oh, forgot about that. That's why I don't burn those candles. Happy Saturday, my friends. I am excited. I'm nervous because this morning I'm about to leave to go get my fifth tattoo. Granny's getting a tatty. I've had this appointment booked for like a month and a half now. So I am super pumped to get it done, bust it out. I'm so excited. It'll make my arm look a little bit better. It just doesn't, I'll, I'll just show you. Um, where do I put you though? It's fine. It's just very linear. Line, line, line. And I'm getting tattoo right here. So it kind of wraps a little bit. It's gonna be more organic. So it just like flows with the arm a little bit more. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> I am a little bit nervous just because every time I get anything medical done, I always get lightheaded. It's not the pain. It's not, I'm not like afraid of needles. I, I just cannot control it. I get lightheaded. But last time I got tattooed, the artist, I told him that I get lightheaded. He said, yeah, me too. And he has tattoos like up, up to his neck, like he's covered. So I'm like, okay, how does he sit there and take it if he has that many tattoos? He goes, go up to the front door, grab a dum-dum, start like eating it a couple of minutes before our appointment starts and then keep it throughout while you're getting tattooed. It'll regulate your blood sugar levels, your blood sugar won't dip and you won't feel nauseous. The man is a genius. I, d I don't know if it was his idea, but I did not feel an ounce of nausea the entire appointment. So, because this piece is a wee bit bigger than just some numbers on my forearm, it's gonna take a little bit longer. I've got a whole bag of blow pops in my purse. There's probably 20 of them. Doubt I'll go through more than three of them, but I'm ready. We're locked and loaded up in here. Granny is on her way to go get a fifth tattoo. Let's go. Mm -hmm. 